Hello, welcome to a quick presentation explaining how to answer question 17 from the January 2010 Edexcel Physics on the Go paper. Okay, pause the video and read this question. Okay, hopefully if you've paused the video, you've had a careful read and you've recognized that you've been told the volume of the hot air balloon, the total weight of the hot air balloon, including the uh, envelope, which just means the sack thing here, the density of the surrounding air, and it asks you to show that the resultant force upward on the balloon at the moment it is released is about 200 newtons. So uh, it's talking about resultant forces. So what forces have we got here? We've got up thrust, and we've got weight. And the resultant force will just be up thrust minus weight, or weight minus up thrust. Whichever way around you want to make it, uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm going to say the resultant force will just be equal to um, up thrust minus weight. Okay, now the weight we've been given 3310 newtons. 100 zero zero newtons. Okay, but the up thrust we're going to have to calculate. Now, Archimedes' principle states that um, the weight of whatever you displace, so this balloon is displacing a lot of air, is the upthrust you'll experience. So the, um, this big volume here is displacing a big volume of air. That volume of air will have a certain amount of weight, and that weight will be exactly equal to the upthrust on the balloon. So what we need to do is come up with an expression that will give us that weight of air. So the weight of the air would equal, be equal to the volume of the air multiplied by the density of the air, which is going to give us mass. Volume times density is equal to mass, multiplied by gravity. Okay, that will give me the weight of the air, which will be equal to the upthrust. So let's put that expression in here. I'm going to put it in brackets. So it's going to be uh, the volume of the balloon will be the volume of the air that's been displaced. They'll be equal to each other. So that's 2830 meters cubed multiplied by the density of the air, 1.2, multiplied by g, acceleration due to gravity, 9.81. Okay, and if I do this calculation, I find do this bit first, and then subtract 33100 newtons from it so you don't make a mistake with um, a bod mass error. Okay. And we find that comes to 214.76 newtons. Okay, I'm just going to round that up to uh, 215 newtons. And that's my answer. And that is about 200 newtons. So I'm quite happy that that's correct. Okay, uh, pause the video, read the question. Okay, if you've read the question, it tells you calculate the initial upward acceleration of the balloon. The mass of the balloon is this. So we've been given the mass. And from the previous question, we found the force, the resultant force on the balloon, 215. So we can use Newton's second law, force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. Rearrange for acceleration, it's going to be equal to F over M. Substitute the numbers in, 215 Newtons, divided by 3370 kilograms. And we get, let me work that out, um, 215 divided by 3370, and we get uh, 0.0637, so on, so on, so on, so on. So let's just uh, leave it as 637, 6, Okay, so I'm just going to round this up to 0. 0.6 um, meters per second squared. Okay, do not forget it's meters per second squared because it's acceleration, okay? Units will uh, gain you a mark or lose your mark in this case. Okay, let's look at the next part of the question. <clears throat> okay, pause the video and read this question. Okay, so this question is talking about the balloon rising through an air of certain viscosity at a certain speed, a constant speed I would imagine, it says the effect of viscous drag on the balloon is negligible provided the airflow is around the balloon is laminar. 
Justify the statement in bold with aid of calculation. You may treat the balloon as a single sphere of mass, sorry, of radius 8.8 .8 meters. So what we're talking about here is we're, we're interested in viscous drag, okay? Um, and they're wanting you to see parallels with the balloon and the Stokes law way of finding uh, the viscosity of a material uh, by uh, taking, say, a tube filled with a viscous liquid you want to find the viscosity of, um, placing two markers, dropping a sphere into this liquid, and then timing how long it takes to cover this distance so you can find V. Um, you, sh you should be able to calculate the uh, force on the the uh, sphere, uh, which will be the weight of the sphere minus the upthrust due to buoyancy. And then you'd be able to substitute all those numbers into the, uh, the, the Stokes law equation, which is uh, F is equal to 6 pi. Uh, and then this symbol means viscosity, R for radius, and V for velocity. Okay? So they want you to see that the balloon rising up through the fluid of the air is basically just the same as a metal ball bearing falling through some engine oil, for instance. So it just wants you to show that the force will be negligible. The viscous drag, which is the, the resisting force, will be very, very small, is what it wants you to show. So you can simply just take the numbers and substitute them straight into this formula. It will be 6 pi, the viscosity is 1.8, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the radius of a sphere, which is the radius of the balloon, this one, 8.8, .8, multiplied by the velocity, 2 meters per second. Okay. If these weren't in meters per second and meters, you'd have to convert them into the uh, standard units um, of meters and meters per second. Okay, okay so uh, let's do this calculation. Okay, so it uh, comes out as 0 0.00597, or I'll just round it up to 0 0.006, which is 6 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons. So uh, force is very small. Statement correct. Okay, so that'll do to answer that question. Okay, add labeled arrows to the diagram below to show the forces acting on a vertically ascending balloon. Okay, pause the video, read, um, have a go at this. Okay, the question is worth two marks, but you actually have to put three arrows on this. You're going to have weight or mg. You're going to have upthrust. Upthrust is going to have to be a little bit bigger than mg. Okay. And you could also draw on here a small arrow, a small arrow for viscous drag. Okay, viscous drag. In fact, I've spelt viscous wrong there. I put an e instead of whoops, uh, viscous, just with an s. Viscous drag, and that would be this arrow here. Okay, so you've got up thrust pushing up, you've got mg pulling down, and viscous drag will act in the opposite direction to motion. And since this thing is rising, um, as it tells us here, vertically ascending, viscous drag will act in the opposite direction of motion. Okay, read the second part of the question. Have a good think about it. Okay, so now it's talking about, as the balloon rises, the density of the surrounding air decreases. Explain why this density change limits the height to which the balloon will rise. Okay, so... The upthrust force is dependent on um, the weight of the air displaced. It's equal to the weight of the air displaced. The volume of the balloon is not going to change. So um, since we calculated upthrust by just doing uh, the volume of the balloon multiplied by the density of the air multiplied by gravity, if this number gets smaller, then upthrust gets smaller. So as the balloon gets higher and higher and higher, its resultant force acting on it, pushing it up, is going to get smaller and smaller. And um, eventually, you'd expect it to hit a constant speed. But of course, there's drag force, so that's going to slow it down 
until it stops. So that's why. Okay. So I've just summarized that here. Since the weight of the air displaced will be equal to the upthrust, as the density of the air decreases, so will the upthrust until it is equal to the weight of the balloon. At this point, viscous drag will slow the balloon to a halt. Okay, I hope you found this useful. And uh, any comments? Uh, I'm glad to hear them.